Good evening children. Tonight's story is a really good story about a very smart little girl called Flossie and it's a story that comes from the southern states of the USA. So here we go. Flossie! The sound of Big Mama's voice floated past the cabins in Sophie's quarters, round the smokehouse, beyond the chicken coop, all the way down to Flossie Finley. Flossie tucked away her straw doll in a hollow log and then hurried to answer her grandmother's call. Here I am, Big Mama, Flossie said after catching her breath. It was hot, hotter than a usual Tennessee August day. Big Mama stopped sorting peaches and wiped her hands and face with her apron. Take these to Miss Viola over at McCutcheon's place she said, reaching behind her and handing Flossie a basket of fresh eggs. Seemed like they'd been troubled by a fox. Miss Viola's chickens be so scared they can't even now lay a stone. Big Mama clicked her teeth and shook her head. Why come Mr. J.W. can't catch the fox with his dogs? Flossie asked, putting a peach in her apron pocket to eat later. Every time they corner that old slickster, he get away. I tell you, that fox is one sly critter said Big Mama. How do a fox look? Flossie asked. I disremember ever seeing one. Big Mama had to think a bit. Child, a fox be just a fox. But one thing for sure, that rascal loves eggs. He'll do most anything to get at some eggs. Flossie tucked the basket under her arm and started on her way. Don't tarry now, Big Mama called, and be particular about them eggs. Yes, um, Flossie answered. The way through the woods was shorter and cooler than the road route under the open sun. What if I come upon a fox? thought Flossie. Ah oh, well, a fox be just a fox. That ain't so scary, she thought. Flossie commenced to skip along when she came upon a critter she couldn't recollect ever seeing. He was sitting inside the road like he was expecting somebody. Flossie skipped right up to him and nodded a greeting the way she'd been taught to. Top of the morning to you, little missy, the critter replied. And what is your name? I be Flossie Finley, she answered with a proper curtsy. I reckon I don't know who you be either. Slowly, the animal circled round Flossie. I am a fox, he announced, all the time eyeing the basket of eggs. He stopped in front of Flossie, smiled as best a fox can, and bowed. At your service. Flossie rocked back on her heels and then up on her toes, back and forward, back and forward, carefully studying the creature who was claiming to be a fox. Nope, she said at last. I just pearly don't believe it. You don't believe what? The fox asked, looking away from the basket of eggs for the first time. I don't believe you a fox, that's what. Fox's eyes flashed anger, and then he chuckled softly. My dear child, he said, sounding right disgusted. Of course I'm a fox. A little girl like you should be simply terrified of me. Whatever do they teach children these days? Flossie tossed her head in the air. Well, whatever you are, you sure think a hebe yourself, she said, and skipped away. Fox looked shocked. Wait, he called. You mean you're not frightened? Not just a bit? Flossie stopped, and then she turned and say, I ain't never seen a fox before, so why should I be scared of you? And I don't even know. No, you a real fox, and that's for a fact. Fox pulled himself tall. He cleared his throat. Are you saying I must offer proof that I am a fox before you'll be frightened of me? That's just what I'm saying. Little Flossie skipped on through the piney woods while that fox fella rushed away looking for whatever he needed to prove he was really who he said he was. Meanwhile, Flossie stopped to rest beside a tree. Suddenly, Fox was beside her. I have the proof, he said. See, I have a thick, luxurious fur. Feel for yourself. Fox leaned over for Flossie to rub his back. Mm, feels like rabbit fur to me she said to Fox. Shucks, you ain't no fox. You're a rabbit, all the time trying to fool me. Me, a rabbit? 
he shouted. I have you know my reputation precedes me. I am the third generation of foxes who have outsmarted and outrun Mr. J.W. McCutcheon's fine hunting dogs. I have raided some of the best hen houses from Franklin to Madison. Rabbit indeed. <laughs> I am a fox, and you will act accordingly. Flossie hopped to her feet. She put her free hand on her hip and patted her foot. Unless you can show you a fox, I'll not accord you nothing. And without further ceremony, she skipped away. Down the road a piece, Flossie stopped by a bubbly spring. She knelt to get a drink of water. Fox came up to her and said, I have a long pointed nose. Now, that should be proof enough. Don't prove nothing to me, Flossie picked some wild flowers. Come to think of it, she said, matter of fact like, rats got long pointed noses. She snapped her fingers. That's it. You're a rat trying to pass yourself off as a fox. That near about took Fox's breath away. I beg your pardon, he gasped. You can beg all you wanna, Flossie said, skipping on down the road. That still don't make you no fox. I'll teach you a thing or two, young lady, Fox called after her. You just wait and see. Before long, Flossie came to a clearing. A large orange tabby was sunning on a tree stump. Hi, pretty kitty, the girls say, and rubbed the cat behind her ears. Meanwhile, Fox slipped from behind a clump of bushes. Since you won't believe me when I tell you I'm a fox, he said stiffly, perhaps you'll believe that fine feline creature toward whom you seem to have some measure of respect. Flossie looked at the cat and winked her eye. He shall use a heap of words, she whispered. Fox beckoned for Cat to speak up. Cat jumped to a nearby log and yawned and stretched and then she answered. This is a fox because he has sharp claws and yellow eyes, she purred. Fox seemed satisfied, but Flossie looked at Cat. She looked at Fox and then once more at both, just to be sure. She say, I'll do respect, Miss Cat, but both of y'all got sharp claws and yellow eyes, so that don't prove nothing, except both of y'all be cats. Fox went to howling and running round in circles. He was plumb beside himself. I am a fox and I know it, he shouted. This is absurd. No call for you to use such kind of language, Flossie said, and she skipped away. Wait, wait, Fox said pleading. I, I just remembered something. It may be the solution to this, this horrible situation. Good, it's about time. I, I, I have a bushy tail, Fox seemed to perk up. That's right, he said. All foxes are known for their fluffy bushy tail. That has got to be adequate proof. Ain't got to be. You got a bushy tail. So do squirrels. Flossie pointed to one overhead, leaping from branch to branch in the treetops. Here, have a bite of a peach, she said, offering Fox first bite of her treat. But Fox was crying like a natural-born baby. No, no, no! <laughs> if I promise you I'm a fox, won't that do? Flossie shook her head no. Whoa, it's me, Fox hollered. I may ne never ever recover my confidence. Flossie didn't stop walking. That's just what I've been saying. You an old confidencer. Come and tell him you was a fox and then can't prove it. Shame on you. Long about that time, Flossie and the fox came out of the woods. Flossie cupped her hands over her eyes and caught sight of Mr. McCutcheon's quarters and Miss Viola's cabin. Fox didn't notice a thing. He just followed behind Flossie, begging to be, be believed. Give me one last chance, he pleaded. Flossie turned on her heels. OK, but just this once more. Fox tried not to whimper, but his voice was really unsteady-like. I I have sharp teeth and I can run exceedingly fast. He waited for Flossie to say something. Slowly the girl rocked from heel to toe, back and forward. You know, she finally said, smiling, it don't make much difference what I think anymore. What? The fox asked. Why? Because there's one of Mr. J.W. McCutcheon's hounds behind you. He's got sharp teeth and he can run fast too. And by the way that hounds are looking, it's all over for you. 
With a quick glance back, Fox dashed towards the woods. The hound knows who I am, he shouted. But I'm not worried. I sure can outsmart and outrun one of Mr. J.W. McCutcheon's miserable mutts any old time of the day because, like I told you, I am a fox. I know, said Flossie. I know. And she turned towards Miss Viola's with the basket legs safely tucked under her arm. <laughs> she knew all the time, didn't she? What a smart little girl. She outfoxed a fox. There, that's a fantastic story. Well, um, God bless and sleep well. And don't forget to say your prayers. And I'll come back with another story tomorrow. Okay, God bless now.